Thanks to recent advancements in technology and the rise of companies such as SpaceX, humanity is finally on the verge of a new era in space exploration. SpaceX intends to restore our spirit for exploration by sending humans to Mars. This will be the first time we have set foot on another planet, but the sheer vastness of space brings about massive challenges. Recent developments suggest that SpaceX may have solved the problem of zero gravity travel thanks to an artificial gravity starship. Let's take a closer look. The sensation of weightlessness, or zero gravity, happens when the effects of gravity are not felt. Technically speaking, gravity does exist everywhere in the universe because it is defined as a force that attracts two bodies to each other. But astronauts in space usually do not feel its effects. The International Space Station, for example, is in perpetual freefall above the Earth. Its forward motion, however, just about equals the speed of its fall toward the planet. This means that the astronauts inside are not pulled in any particular direction. So, they float. Not having to bear weight on your feet sounds relaxing, but in the long term there are many health problems associated with it. Bones and muscles weaken, and other changes also take place within the body. One of the functions of the ISS is to study how astronaut health is affected by long periods of weightlessness. You don't have to leave Earth to escape the bonds of gravity. Anyone who has ridden to the top of the hill in a fast roller coaster or sat in a small plane pushed down suddenly by the wind briefly experienced weightlessness. More sustained periods are possible in planes that fly a parabola. NASA's Reduced Gravity Flight Program, for example, flies planes in a series of about 30 to 40 parabolas for researchers to conduct experiments on board. Each climb produces a force about twice the force of gravity for 30 seconds. Then, when the plane reaches the top of the parabola and descends, passengers feel microgravity for about 25 seconds. The film crew and actors in the movie Apollo 13 spent hours aboard a plane that flew parabolic flights over and over again. This allowed the actors to really float during their time in the movie spacecraft, rather than relying on cumbersome wires. Astronauts, however, experience weightlessness for much longer periods. The longest sustained time spent in space took place in 1994-95, when Valery Polyakov spent almost 438 days in space. Even a few days in space can present health problems, as Haida Marie Stephanishin Piper discovered after spending two weeks in space during STS-11S in 2006. During a press conference after the landing, Piper collapsed as she was not quite readjusted to gravity. Weightlessness causes several key systems of the body to relax as it is no longer fighting the pull of gravity. Astronauts' sense of up and down gets confused because the vestibular system can no longer figure out where the ground and the ceiling are. Spacecraft designers take this into account. The ISS, for example, has all of its writing on the walls pointing in the same direction. Crew members also experience a disruption in their proprioceptive system, which tells where arms, legs, and other parts of the body are oriented relative to each other. This disorientation can cause astronauts to become queasy for a few days. One famous example took place during Apollo 9 in 1969. Rusty Schweikert had to change a planned spacewalk because he was feeling ill. The concern was that if he vomited while in his spacesuit, the fluid could spread through his helmet or interfere with the breathing apparatus and cause him to potentially choke to death. Spacecraft also must be designed to take microgravity into account. During spacewalks, for example, astronauts require extra handholds and footholds on the exterior of their spacecraft so that they can anchor themselves and not float away. Astronauts in space for weeks to months can run into trouble. Calcium and bone secrete out through urine. As the bones weaken, astronauts are more susceptible to breaking them if they slip and fall, just like people with osteoporosis. Muscles also lose mass. But time on the International Space Station has helped NASA run studies on how astronaut health is affected by time and weightlessness. Already, the agency has made changes. For example, it replaced the interim resistive exercise device with the advanced resistive exercise device in 2008, allowing astronauts to do weightlifting without maxing out their top weight. ARED is linked to better outcomes in bone density and muscle strength, although all conclusions in space are hard to draw since the astronaut population is fit already and extremely small. Astronauts typically have an allocated exercise period of two hours a day in space to counteract these effects. This time not only includes cardiovascular exercise and weightlifting, but also time to change clothes and set up or take down equipment. Despite exercise, it still takes months of rehabilitation to adjust on Earth after a typical six-month space mission. More recently, doctors have discovered eye pressure changes in orbit. 
NASA has tracked vision changes in astronauts that were on the space station, but nothing so serious as to cause concern. Its cause is still under investigation, although one possible culprit includes spinal fluid that stays constant in microgravity instead of the normal shifting that takes place on Earth as you lie down or stand up. In addition to the spinal fluid, a 2017 study tracked changes in both short flight and long flight astronauts. Some studies also point out that astronauts experience a slightly elevated level of carbon dioxide on the station because of the filtration system. That gas may also contribute to eye problems. Former NASA astronaut Scott Kelly participated in a rare one-year mission to the International Space Station in 2015 and 16. His twin brother and former NASA astronaut Mark agreed to participate, along with Scott, in several twin experiments to compare Scott's health in space with that of Mark's on the ground. Preliminary results from one study released in October 2017 showed that different genes turn on or off in space. Other studies discussed earlier that year revealed subtle changes as well. For example, telomeres and Scott temporarily got longer in space. Scott also had a slight deterioration in cognitive ability and bone formation, although not enough to be concerning. But if the need for artificial gravity is so clear, why bother with research in space or on Earth? Why don't engineers simply get to work designing spinning ships like in the movies? The answer is that artificial gravity requires a trade-off because all that spinning creates problems. As on the rotor ride, moving your head while you're spinning fast causes nausea. Spinning also impacts the fluid in your inner ear and any other body parts that you move while you're in a rotating environment. And that nausea, disorientation, and movement problems worsen the faster you rotate. But the amount of artificial gravity that can be produced depends on both the RPMs and the size of whatever is rotating. To experience a given amount of gravity, for example, one half of the usual amount that you feel on Earth, the length of the radius of rotation determines how fast you need to spin. Build a wheel-shaped craft with a radius of 738 feet, and you'll produce full Earth gravity rotating at just one RPM. That's slow enough that scientists are very sure that nobody would get nauseous or disoriented. Other than the floor being a little bit curved, things aboard a craft would feel pretty normal, but building and flying such an enormous structure in space would entail numerous engineering challenges. This means that NASA and any other space agencies or organizations likely to send people around the solar system in the future must settle for a lower amount of gravity, a faster rotation, or both. Since there's no laboratory on the moon where the surface gravity is about 16% that of Earth's surface, making it a great place to research the effects of low gravity as opposed to weightlessness, there simply isn't enough data to know how much gravity humans may need for long-term space missions or space colonies. Such data is needed, as is data on how much rotation humans can reasonably tolerate, and that's the rationale for ongoing artificial gravity research. Upon analyzing their own craft, SpaceX has found they face certain technical challenges of their own. For one, the long axis of the Starship is 160 feet from nose to tail and comes with a 30-foot diameter. This design allows for a mere 15-foot radius for acceleration, and a rapid roll on the ship will create extreme stress on the space frame and risk catastrophic failure. What's even worse is that the crew travels towards the core of the rolling spaceship, the centrifugal force would decrease and cause a substantial difference in artificial gravity. This would cause Coriolis force-induced motion sickness for the astronauts, making them even sicker. Another major issue that comes with having a rotating starship is potential communication breakdown, as the ship will be constantly rotating, Orienting antenna precisely could be very challenging and hinder communications. The rotation would force the antenna to continually lose and regain signal as it moves out of its orientation range. A rotating craft could also cause power problems on the journey. The most effective way to generate power in space is with solar panels, and the Starship will be no different. Keeping the panels oriented towards the sun to capture energy as the craft rotates can be very problematic, depending on the nature of the rotation and the orientation of the panels. One proposed solution is to tether the crew module to the expended launch stage and rotate it around a common center of gravity. While this option is not viable for the Starship, it does open the way for a different approach that may solve the problem. Due to the massive health risks posed by traveling in zero gravity, SpaceX has come up with a plan to produce artificial gravity on the Starship. The new concept is called the Gravity Link Starship. The idea was inspired in part by science fiction. 
Depending on how realistic a franchise is trying to be, starships will either generate their own gravity using some special device or through rotating sections. While the former concept is much like the hyperdrive, the latter is entirely feasible. The concept goes back over a century, with the first recorded example provided by Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, one of the founding fathers of rocketry and aeronautics. In 1903, he published a study titled Investigation of Outer Space Rocket Devices, where he suggested using rotational force to create artificial gravity in space. Since then, many variations of this idea have been proposed for space stations and habitats, such as the Von Braun Wheel, the O'Neill Cylinder, and the Stanford Taurus. Some concepts are even being considered for development, such as NASA's Nautilus X space station or the Gateway Foundation's proposal for a commercial space station. After conducting some research into centripetal force, scientists arrived at the idea for the GLS. The GLS is a hub ship where the payload bay is filled with a truss that unfolds and deploys starships and would link up with them during the six-plus-month-long journey to Mars. Once linked up, the passenger ships would swivel around to reorient themselves and fire their thrusters to impart momentum to the wheel. Once enough velocity was generated to simulate Earth normal gravity, the passenger ships would reorient themselves again to face inward toward the hub ship. For the remainder of the journey, those aboard the passenger ships would experience a sensation of being pulled down thanks to the centripetal force created by the rotation of the wheel. In addition to detailing the system, scientists also performed the necessary calculations to determine the structure of the truss and the necessary velocity to simulate Earth normal gravity. They determined that a rotational velocity of 31 meters a second would work for a system that measured about 100 meters in radius, providing the feeling of 1 g and making roughly three rotations per minute. Scientists are already at work in the second iteration of this proposal, which includes updated calculations on the rotation, a new truss shape, and the introduction of cables to reinforce the tensile strength of the truss. If you found this video informative, you may also like this one which talks about a recently discovered gap in the universe that defies physics. Do you think humans can adapt to life on Mars? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.